Hi, my name is Victor Borges from DNVGL Software and this video is about building up a Mars model in six steps. So by the end of the video you should be able to build up a basic model in Mars but also understand you know the modeling process. Um, just l let me just highlight one thing before you know we start modeling in Mars. Um, the same steps we are taking to build up the model today can be used to analyze the model. So if you took a model from someone and you want to understand what that model is doing you can simply look and follow the same steps and try to understand what that model is doing, right? So let's get started. And we get started in Mars 9.2 by uh, going to File and New, or in the Quick Access toolbar, just clicking on New, right? I'm gonna click on New. The first window that shows up is the simulator parameters. So this is where we define all the basic parameters in the simulation. There are five areas here. Uh, five main parameters that we need to define. We need to define the system life, in this case, 10 years, right? Uh, the system life can be uh, the platform's life or, you know, the next business plan period, right? Like next five years, for example. And there's also the start date, which we can change, right? So in this case, Mario is taking the first date of the current year. I'm recording this video in 2016, so 1st of January 2016. Uh, we also have the number of simulations, right? So the number of simulations in our case, for our case, that is going to be 100 life cycles, right? Or 100 simulations. And this is part of the Monte Carlo method, you know, like where Maros is going to sample as many lives as possible. And we are going to take the average, you know, to, to understand how the system is likely to behave. All right, so after defining the system life and the number of simulations, we can define the products, right? So I can double click here and this window shows up. So Mars can take up to 10 different products, right? Uh, for this, for this, for our case study, we're gonna assume a single product model, right? So we're gonna say it's only oil running through this particular system. Uh, the product name can be anything you want. So if you speak any Spanish, it can be like, for example, crudo, right? But let's keep it with oil, right? Um, but you, you also need to define the phase. And again, as I said, Mars can take up to 10 products and each product can have different phases, right? So this is to do with separation. You know, Mars is very good at modeling separation systems. So we're gonna assume liquids for oil. Units, you have a range of units to select from. Uh, if you don't find your unit there, you can type in Victor, for example, or you can type in your name, right? So, or maybe, uh, you know, anything, pretty much anything, right? But Victor is not a very good unit, so let's pick up thousands of barrels, right? We're also gonna choose a color. Color coding for the product string is very helpful if you have a big uh, block flow diagram. Allows you to easily uh, identify where a product is coming from and where it's going to, right? So when I press OK there, failure data will be in years and repair data will be in hours for us, right? So this is where you define the units. So there you go, the simulator parameters, you know, these are the basic, you know, uh, uh, parameters that we need to define. We also have, of course, another five tabs to, to play about, but today we're going to focus on this. Uh, this is the first step, simulator parameters. So we're going to press OK. The next step for us is building up the block flow diagram. So the block flow diagram is probably one of the most thought provoking steps we have in Maros, right? Why is that, Victor? Uh, because that's where you define the logical connection between the different, you know, units in your system, right? So the easiest way of building up the block flow diagram is uh, using the equipment catalog, which is hidden away, right? So Mars 9.2 comes with a new fu new function that you know I can you know pass my mouse over equipment catalog and just use it. Uh, it just opens it, right? So in this case, in our case, that we're gonna have one well. Sorry, two wells, well one, which has a node capacity of 100,000 barrels. Oh, let me just open that again. Well two, which then has, again, 100,000 barrels. And we also have my uh, production platform, which has, in this case, 200,000 barrels, because I want to be able to take all production from both well one and well two, right? So when I finish this, I finish dragging and drop uh, my nodes from the catalog, right? I can, I need to connect the nodes, right? So the way of connecting the nodes using the connection tool, you can see it's grayed out at the moment. 
in order to enable that I can click on any area of the blank central pane there you go so you can see it now is connected so, so the connection tool is made available and I always need to connect from right to left from up from the downstream to the upstream right so always right from left very easy to connect you know just click on a node with the left button and drop it on the node you want to connect right so the same thing applies for well two there you go so now we have two wells and one production platform right um very easy to understand what's happening here so if there is a failure you know in well one okay uh we are losing only production from well one if we have a failure on well two we are losing production only from well two but if we have a failure from the production platform we shut down the entire system right and that's pretty pretty kind of a you know obvious but it's good to show you know because it's very easy to understand as well all right so this is step two defining the block flow diagram let's now move to step three which is defining the production profile for each one of the wells right so we need to know how much flow we have running through the system at the moment what we defined was that you know well one can take a hundred thousand barrels well two can take a hundred thousand barrels can take up to but we're not saying how much is actually taking, right? So in order to define that, I need to go to the flow grid, which is in view, flow grid, right? So if I click on that, I'm gonna move to the flow grid, and here's where I define my production profile, right? So in, as you can see, we can normally define well one and well two. That's because Maros, uh, in Maros, you control the flow via the, um, feed nodes right and feed nodes in Maros are nodes that don't have any upstream connection right so in this case well one and well two are the nodes that we're going to use to uh, control the flow in our system right there are two ways of adding rows here I can right click on the plus button and I can insert a series if I want to you know but I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna add a row just by clicking on cell below well one and I'm gonna type in 100 and Mars is gonna automatically create a row for us. So well one and well two both can produce up to 100,000 barrels each. So pretty much full capacity, right? Uh, I can change the date as I said before. I can go to the drop down list and say, all right, so this is actually starting January 1st, 2020, right? So this is step three, uh, defining the production profile. Uh, and then what we need to do now, we need to uh, go back to the asset view and we are gonna create a our reliability block diagram, right? So the reliability block diagram, again, uh, it can be defined from any of the nodes, right? So when I double click here, please take a look at add item area, right? So when I double click that, you can see the add items going to change because it's pretty much uh, looking at things that I can only add at that particular level in the hierarchical tree. So and in the hierarchical tree, the elements I can only I can only add elements such as systems, parallel blocks, equipment items, plan maintenance, conditional elements, and black box. All right. So we we start by adding a system, and this is a tip from Victor always add a system right it's going to help you a lot when it comes to the reporting and it's going to make sense in two three minutes right uh i can change the name and i'm going to call this uh unplanned shutdowns right and within this unplanned shutdowns as i can see here i can build up my uh, reliability block diagrams and so so in order to build up our reliability block diagrams we need to use the equipment catalog again but instead of using the catalog on the top we're going to use the catalog on the bottom right so let me fix this catalog now because i'm going to use it and in our case study we're going to have two pumps two by 50 percent and also a heat exchanger right so i'm going to add a pump which is called oil pump so if you have the tag number, you can, you can enter your tag number, right? Uh, but also we want to have a heat exchanger, right? So yeah, there you go. So this pump is a two by 50% pump, 
but I'm not gonna change the configuration now. I'm gonna leave both blocks in series because again, this is a tip from Victor. Uh, because Myers is gonna, you know, save you some work when defining the reliability data, which is the next step, right? So we're not there just now. Um, so just to understand a bit about the reliability block diagram, so these two uh, items are in series, which pretty much means that both of them are required to be operational if we want to have the system operational, right? So at some point, uh, when we define the parallel block here, uh, we're going to see that it's going to be a 2 by 50% configuration, meaning that we have two pumps and each one of them can take 50% of production, right? And what the, that means is means that if there is a failure in one of the pumps, uh, we only lose 50% of production, all right? So before, so let's go to the next steps, right? So we define the block flow diagram, we define the reliability block diagram. And the next step, the fifth step, is defining the uh, reliability data, right? So I can double click on my oil pump, right? And I can, now I can hide up my catalog. If I scroll along to the right, I can see that there'll be two stars in the failure type and the repair type, right? The failure type is gonna describe, you know, the failure pattern of this oil pump. Uh, we can use up more than 10 different statistical distributions to describe the failure pattern. We're gonna stick with the uh, exponential because that's the simplest one. And we're gonna say this pump fails every, you know, half year, 0 0.5 years, right? And how do I know it's years? I can go back to my simulator parameters and I can see failure type in years, right? Uh, the repair type is taking us 12 hours to fix this pump. Right, so it fails every half a year and it takes us 12 hours. If I move to the next, uh, to the heat exchanger, right, I can define again my mean time to failure. So this heat exchanger takes two years to fail, it's likely to fail every two years. And it takes us 24 hours to, to repair it, right? So when it fails, it takes us 24 hours. All right, so this is then step number five, okay? So, um, before we finish, we need to go back to the unplanned shutdown system and we need to right click on oil pumps and convert to 2 by 50%. So what Mars is gonna do, Mars is gonna automatically uh, copy the first parallel unit and paste on the second one. So pretty much meaning that, you know, now unit one and unit two, oil pump one and oil, two, oil pump two, they look exactly the same. And that's the reason why I decided I asked you not to change the configuration before because if you change the configuration before adding the reliability data, you need to um, enter the data for both parallel unit one and parallel unit two, right? So this saves you a bit, a bit of time, right? Finally, what we need to do, we need to run the simulation. When I cl click run now, Mara's going to ask me, do you want to save this model? We're going to say yes. And we're going to say, all right, I'm going to save this as case study. You can save with whatever name you want, or your production system. I'm going to save it. Maros is going to run this the application. Sorry, before that, sorry, my apologies. Maros is going to ask us to configure the simulator, right? And we're going to generate an animation. And we're going to press run now. What Maros does is Maros opens the um, running efficiency graph which is in this case it runs quite fast and we cannot really see it but you can see there is some variation at the beginning of the life uh, when we estimate in the first cycles but then it, that, that disappears right uh, and it becomes almost like a straight line if we go through the main um, results in Maros right just um, so you understand and that's step number six right um, it, we're losing around 0.4 percent of efficiency because we have failures on the criticality shot, right? So if I click on here, I can see that my oil pump is both contributing equal, equally, almost equally, right? Uh, and also we have the heat exchanger, right? But it's almost like one third each one of them. And the calculation here is based on the capacities we have, on the frequency of failure and the time it takes for us to repair, right? Maros also, also produces a annual production efficiency, right? So we can see uh, early how much production we, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, getting from from the assets, right? Uh, so this uh, the six steps to create a model in Maros. Uh, you have simulator parameters, you have block flow diagram, then you have the flow grid to define the production profile. Then we have the reliability block diagrams. Then we have the reliability data, and finally running the results. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please do get in touch with us at software.support at dnvgl.com. Thank you very much. Bye.